Being a writer of the local town's newspaper is not always that exciting. Perhaps if you've come from an exciting place like London or Manchester, but I come from a small town in the middle of Gloucestershire. Have you ever heard of Gloucestershire? If you're not from the UK, you probably haven't. Basically, the only thing people know about my county is Gloucester cheese. The only interesting thing about working for the local newspaper is the section that I'm in charge of writing, because I can write whatever I want. Basically, I have to write about things that happen in the county. Locals who are quite famous, events happening, and the best places to visit, stories, you know, etc. For one of my articles, I had the idea of writing about a local funeral home and cemetery. This place is the only one in town. It was built in the Victorian era by the Churchills, a local family who still owns the place. Everybody in town who has lost a loved one has probably been there, so I thought this was a great idea to write about. I messaged once through email asking if they would be interested in talking to me about the place for my article, but I waited three days and I never got an answer from them. Luckily, Going there is pretty easy, so I decided to pay them a visit. When I arrived at the funeral home, I was greeted by a young ginger woman. She was nice at first when she was assisting me, but when she heard I was a writer from the local newspaper, and my possible article idea, well, she got a bit shy. When I said that I had sent an email, she was very defensive. Oh, that's rare, maybe the email didn't send. She tried to make me believe, and as I was talking to her, a bigger, red-headed man came down the stairs. Hello, he said as he walked towards me. He shook my hand and introduced himself as Tom. I see that you met my granddaughter, Shauna. Is there anything I can help you with? He kindly said as the young girl shyly walked away. I talked to Tom about my idea, luckily for me. He was the person in charge of the place, and he seemed very excited about it. Tom was very full of himself. One of the first things he asked me was if the newspaper was going to pay him for the article. And I explained to him, well, that's not normally how it works. He was still pleased with this. Fair enough. At least they get to hear about more of us, huh? He said. Tom introduced me to his wife, Miriam, and told her to show me around the place as he had to leave. Now, Miriam gave me a tour around both the funeral home and the cemetery. The funeral home was beautiful, and the cemetery is very small compared to others, but also very nice. Miriam really knew her way around. She knew the story of every single one of those graves, even the oldest ones. And at the end of the tour... I asked Miriam if they kept books or anything to help me learn about the story of the cemetery. And then she told me that there was a library where they had records of all the corpses. She said that she would have to ask Tom first. I didn't have any answers that day since my time was up, but when I came back the next day and I spoke to Tom, he was more than happy to show me these documents. He took me to this beautiful room that he seemed very proud of. It had three bookshelves, and two of them huge, and the other was a little bit smaller. Tom explained that the two big bookshelves contained all the documents of the deceased people that they have organized funerals for, and all the people who have been buried at the cemetery. The smaller contained all the pictures that the family has collected from the funeral home and the cemetery. Tom wouldn't stop talking about his business and how his family has managed the business for generations. And I could tell he was a man who enjoyed attention, and he was doing the most to make me feel comfortable so that I could write an excellent thing about him and his business. But I was okay with that. The more access to the information I had, the better. And at first, I wasn't sure what I was going to write about, to be honest. I was just waiting for inspiration to come, but the first thing that caught my eye in that whole room was the smaller bookshelf with the pictures. I had been so bombarded with information about the whole place by Tom, who never shuts up, and Miriam, who is the world's worst storyteller, 
so I just wanted to do something simple, like look at the pictures. The first book I grabbed happened to be an old book that had pictures of the funeral home and all the changes it had been through the years. Not the most exciting things. However, the second photo book I grabbed was much more interesting. I noticed there were many photo books organized by years, and so I grabbed the most recent one, 2016. Each book contained pictures taken at every funeral and every burial. I did think this was weird at first. I can't say I ever heard of pictures being taken at such a sad moment. But they were taken by the people at the funeral home, not the visitors. And in all honesty, I didn't know whether this made things better or worse. As I was looking through the 2014 photo album, I noticed something. In all the pictures taken, there was a familiar face. It was so hard to notice that first because, well, some of the pictures were blurry, but all of them had something in common. The same man appeared in all of them. Now, it took me a while to notice this, but I noticed he was always there. I felt intrigued. Who was this gentleman, and why was he at all the funerals in 2014? I grabbed the 2015 and 2016 albums and noticed he appeared in all the photos where there was a large group of people. It was easy to miss him at first because the pictures were poorly taken, but there was no doubt it was the same tall man wearing an elegant brown suit. And all of a sudden, well, my investigation didn't seem so boring anymore. I grabbed all the other albums, and just as I suspected. The gentleman had also been captured in the pictures. It was extraordinary. I started to think about different names to call this man in my article. Being as curious as I was, I also grabbed the albums from the 1990s to check if he was also there. And just as I expected, he was. The same thing happened in all the 1980s albums. More than just a coincidence. This was bizarre. No way he met every single person who died in all of those years. Why would he always wear the same suit? And why did he always look the same? I needed answers immediately, so I grabbed three different albums from three different years and decided to look for someone to answer my questions. Funnily enough, the first person I bumped into was Shauna, the girl who was at the reception on the first day. I asked her if Tom or Miriam were around, but she said that Tom wasn't there. Miriam was busy working. Maybe you can help me, I told her after I showed her my discovery. When I showed her the recent pictures, she told me she didn't know who that was or why he was even there. But when I showed her the oldest pictures, she changed her story. All of a sudden, the man in the pictures was called Gerbert was an employee for many years. This wasn't completely unbelievable, but why would she lie at first? Also, she seemed rather nervous, even more so than usual. There was just something about Shauna and Miriam Churchill. They always looked as if they had seen a ghost or something. They were also cutting and mysterious. They always had a lot to say, but avoided questions. It was rather late, so I decided to go home and come back in the morning. The next day when I arrived, Miriam offered to give me another tour. I asked her whether I could continue looking at the photo albums, but she seemed a bit apprehensive. Maybe you could look at them another day. The room is being used, she said. I accepted it, and also thought this was a good opportunity to ask her about the man. Miriam, is there a chance I could speak with Gerber? I asked. I couldn't help but notice something incredible. I checked all the albums since the 1980s, and he was in all the group pictures taken here. I think that would do good for an interview. I mentioned before being interrupted. Gerbert's dead. Sorry, she told me. Sorry for asking, but is there any information about him that you could tell me? I continued. Listen, Mr. Bennett, I'd appreciate if we didn't speak about Gerber anymore. 
Yes, he used to work here, but we rather not talk about him. Despite her request, I wanted to continue finding information, although I wasn't going to tell her that. When I came back the following day, Tom was there. Since he was so friendly, I asked him if I could use the office. He told me I couldn't go in because of some preparations. Then he invited me to have a cup of coffee with him and to talk some more about his family. He told me all about every single person of his family who owned the place before him. He told me that when he passes away, he was going to leave the place to his son. But he and his wife died in a car accident. Now the only person to be his heir was Shauna. He encouraged me to ask questions, but the only thing I had in mind was the mystery of Gerbert. I was a bit fed up of his talk, so I told him I had to leave, although this wasn't entirely true. When I had the tour, I noticed there was a utility room in the basement, and so I decided to hide in there. And why? Well, because it was already 5 at night, and the place closed at 5.30. I knew being there without permission wasn't the right thing, but there was something being hidden from me that I needed to know. At 6 at night, I decided to leave the utility room. The lights weren't entirely off, however. I couldn't hear anybody around, and so I thought everything would be fine. I went straight up to the second floor where the office was. I'm not usually the kind of person to believe in things that don't make too much sense, but there was something telling me there was more to the story of Gerber that they weren't willing to tell me. So I went ahead and grabbed the photo books from the 40s. My intuition was right. Gerber also appeared in the pictures. But this wasn't the worst thing. The strangest part was that Gerber had the exact same appearance that he did in the late 90s. Same brown suit. Same mid-length hair. Not looking older or younger. The same numb expression on his face. And then all of a sudden, the power went off. I knew I needed to hurry, so I grabbed some of the albums and put them in my backpack. When I was leaving the room, I felt something behind me. It felt like someone's cold, stinky breath. I turned around while pointing with my phone, and I saw a tall man in a brown suit. It was Gerber. However... He didn't look like he did in the picture. His skin was green. His lips were pale. His eyes were completely white and he had maggots all over his suit. I knew immediately that this man was no man. Something otherworldly. There was no other explanation. Whilst I was struggling to open the door, I felt something sharp running down my back. It was his nails. Luckily, soon after this, I managed to open the door. Unfortunately, while I tried to run down the stairs, I fell over, and I lost my phone. I couldn't see what was going on, but I could hear the footsteps of someone coming down the stairs. I knew it was him. I tried to get up, but it hurt too much. I must have sprained my ankle. I tried crawling, but I knew he would get me before I could escape. But suddenly, something great happened. The front door opened and the power came back immediately. It was Shauna. You have to go, he's here. I screamed at her. She looked surprised for a second, but then told me I had nothing to worry about because he was gone. I looked at the stairs and she was right. You're bloody stupid, Shauna moaned before helping me to get up. Apparently... She was in a pub right across the street when she got a notification on her phone that the power had gone off, and so she decided to come have a look. She gave Tom a quick call and told him that the power was her fault and that everything was okay. Be lucky I didn't tell him the truth. He would have called the police on you by now, she said. Listen to me. You can't write that article. Promise me? I won't tell anybody you trespassed, but you can't tell anybody about Gerbert. Please. 
and I promised her I wouldn't tell anybody if she told me what was going on around that place. And so she explained to me that ages ago, soon after the Churchills had just built it, a tragedy happened. They buried a man who wasn't dead. Apparently, someone at the local hospital made the mistake, and the Churchills didn't notice until many years later when they were exhuming the body to move it to the mausoleum, and noticed the corpse in a weird position, and nails marked all over the coffin. The Churchills didn't know what to do. The man was simply known as Gerbert, but he had no family and the hospital administration had completely changed. It was too late. They didn't want to create a scandal and they didn't want to be in trouble. They were too afraid of what could happen to them and the business, so they never said anything. However, the same day they discovered all of this, Gerbert started to haunt the place. They say he wanders around, scaring those who know about his existence. However, he has never hurt anybody. The Churchills said that they have tried everything to make him stop. His remains are gone. They have called the priest to bless the place, but it just doesn't stop. And they believe he won't stop until the truth is told. And who knows if this really is the case. I mean, it might be. And I think having Gerbert haunting them generation after generation is enough of a punishment. That's why I never said anything until now. Apparently, Tom Churchill died recently, so Sean and Miriam inherited the funeral home and cemetery, but they just abandoned it and left town. Nobody heard from them again. I mean, I can understand why they wouldn't want the place and why they didn't want to sell it. However, now they're out of the picture. I feel like telling the truth about Gerber is the right thing to do. Maybe this would help him rest. I mean, I can't say for sure, but I do hope so. <laughs>